Welcome back, everybody. Pastor Gabe here, welcoming you to another episode of Optica, where we invite you to open your eyes and see what God is doing. We are thankful for all of you connecting week after week, for those subscribers, especially the new subscribers who just found us, who've been writing us and asking us questions. We are so thankful. Today's episode, I think, is a good one. And today we want to talk about fault finders. Am I a fault finder? What is a fault finder? Can we get over being fault finders? And so hopefully you'll be open to reflecting with us, listening with us, and prayerfully deliberating to see what we can learn together. And as always, keep your comments coming, keep your questions coming, and we'll try to be faithful to respond to all of them. Hey, look, I think one of the things uh, I've seen recently, especially in this kind of social media age, is this back and forth, this sometimes very uncivilized debating, more than debating, arguing, and quite frankly, being uncivil with other people. And a lot of that has to do with some of us being trained as fault finders. What is a fault finder? In short, this is the kind of Gabriel Salguero abridged version of fault finders. A fault finder is someone who always finds what's wrong with something. Ergo, the word fault. They find the fault in something. A fault finder is usually a person who is profoundly disagreeable in almost every circumstance, who can always tell you what everyone else is doing wrong. A fault finder, more often than not, although not always, is deeply upset, not just at the world, but is deeply dissatisfied with something in their own life. And usually, when you have deep dissatisfaction in your own life, you project outwardly. You find fault in every plan, in every strategy, in every idea, in every new invention, in every new project. Remember when Moses was leading the people out of Egypt into the Promised Land? There was a a man, a quote-unquote leader called Korah, who was always finding fault in Moses' leadership and Moses' decisions. And regrettably, he led many people astray to become, (laughs) I remember the old King James version, grumblers and mumblers. Fault finders are often grumbling, often beneath their breath or underneath their breath about everything that's wrong in the world and what everybody's doing wrong and particularly they take offense at things that are not intended to be offensive. I wonder if we had less fault finders would we have healthier communities? Now I want to be clear there's room for legitimate critique. Fault finding and critique are not the same things. Critique is when you take an objective observation of something and you try to point out how you can do it better or what are the deficiencies in them. It's objective. It seeks to improve. It seeks to heal. It seeks to help. Fault finding is this pugilistic stance. It's always trying to be combative and oftentimes comes either from a place of dissatisfaction or pride. I would have done it better. I could have done it better. That's often the internal monologue of the fault finder. (laughs) If I was in charge, I would have did it this way, this way, that way. Like Korah to Moses. Like many people who are working in teams and if something goes wrong, it's the responsibility or the fault of everybody on the team except themselves. Fault finding is really, really crippling to morale, to to team building, to establishing dreams and visions as a community or as a group of people. Uh, I know people, and if I'm honest with myself, sometimes I've been a fault finder because instead of being kind of an objective critic of things and seeking for them to be better, my pride has gotten in the way 
And I'm always thinking, I could have done this better. Or this person or that person doesn't know what they're doing. The dilemma with fault finders is that oftentimes, especially in Christian circles, they try to spiritualize it. You know what they say? Get ready. Here's how they redefine fault finding. I'm being prophetic. It said I'm prophetic and nobody understands me. Well, if prophetic is synonymous with fault finding, we don't really know what a biblical understanding of prophetic means. The Bible says in the book of Jeremiah, the first chapter, that when God ordained Jeremiah, even as a young lad, as a young boy, even when he, before he was in the womb of his mother, God ordained Jeremiah to be a prophet. God told him that the role of the prophet was not just to pull up and to uproot. And many people in modern society think that being prophetic is just pointing out to everything, everything that's wrong in the world. Oh, that's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong, and I'm just going to destroy it. I'm just going to take a hammer to everything. But the other part of the verse that God tells Jeremiah is to plant, to build, or to edify. Fault finders are expert at demolishing and very poor at building up. Have you ever been around someone who's always critiquing you, can never find praise about anything that you do? That's a fault finder. I've been around fault finders and oftentimes when I spend time to get to know them, to love them, to listen to them, I've discovered that a lot of that projection comes from a deep place of a void of things they wish they could have done or didn't do. Or conversely, a place of pride, a higher estimation of themselves than what they ought to have. A kind of superiority complex. Listen, if my posture in life is that everybody is wrong and I'm always right, I have a problem. If my posture in life is to look with a magnifying glass at everything that I can see wrong in society, I have a problem. It will be difficult for me to find the good, the beautiful, the true, and the just. And these are deep longings in human existence to find the beautiful, the good, the true, and the just. The beautiful, the good, the true, and the just. And a fault finder, he or she has difficulty finding beauty and finding truth and finding what is just and finding what is good because they're always focused on what is unpleasant, what is painful, what is wrong with the world. And let me be clear, there is plenty wrong with the world. There are plenty of things that we need to fix in our churches, in our schools, in our governments, in our society. Just some weeks ago, I talked about church hurt and legitimate complaints that we can find with our society and with spiritual leaders. But the converse is also true. We can find what is beautiful, what is good, what is of a good report, the book of Philippians says. And so it's important for us to understand that if in this season of our lives, all we can find is fault in people, what they've done wrong, or fault in ourselves, sometimes we're hypocritical with ourselves, we are robbing ourselves of the opportunity to enjoy all that good that God has for us. Can I say just one more thing? Fault finders often are leaders because it is easier oftentimes to follow a critic than it is to follow a builder. It doesn't take much insight to find things that are wrong. Oftentimes, it doesn't take much skill to, to point out obvious wrongdoing. But the real skill is to repair, restore, heal, and build something fresh. The prophet Jeremiah says, if you're able to take out of what is vile and create something good, you shall be like my mouthpiece. In other words, if you have the capacity 
to redeem things, to restore things, to heal things. Not just complain. And let me be clear, there's space for complaint. There's space for lament. There's space, space for critique. But fault finding is a whole different thing. It's often accompanied by judging other people's motivations and character without really seeking to understand why people do the things they do in the way they do it. It's really about imposing our modalities. If I were you, I'd do it that way. (laughs) If I were you, I'd do it this way. But isn't that the point? We're not them and they are not us. And so fault finding oftentimes projects itself as imposing our will on other people. So how can we remedy this? I think that we can embrace a posture of listening and humility and seeking to understand, hey, there's a reason this person went around about it this way. We can disagree, but at least we seek to understand before we disagree. When I was in seminary, One of my favorite professors once told me, you have not earned the right to critique somebody till you are able to articulate their argument clearly. That was powerful. You have not earned the right to critique a book unless you're able to articulate the thesis of that book clearly. You don't have to agree with it, but you have to be able to articulate it clearly. So you're critiquing something that you don't understand, that you understand. Because to find fault in something that you don't understand is to create an unjust judgment on something. So I remember that when I was doing my PhD, the professor, there was a a student, this is a doctoral class, student just trying to destroy this book. A book, by the way, by a person who's pretty learned and had vast experience. He's like, this is wrong with it. This is wrong with it. This is wrong with it. And after the professor let that student, that doctoral student speak for about 15 minutes, the, do- the professor asked the doctoral student, what's the thesis of the book? I would, I, let me tell you, half the class froze. Uh, because you're telling me everything's wrong with the book. Can you tell me what the book is actually saying? And so oftentimes... Fault finding is not really critiquing what others do, but it's misunderstanding or misrepresenting what they've done or how they've done it. And look, before I get some texts and some messages about, but we need a prophetic critique. Critique is important. Critique is a part of of scripture. I want to say yes, yes, and yes. I agree with that. Critique is not fault finding. Fault finding often injures the other person and doesn't seek to have them rethink or re-examine their fundamental presuppositions or fundamental assumptions. Fault finding, if I'm honest, when I've done it, it's really not about the other person or helping them. It's about me. I'm uncomfortable. Or I'm, I think I have a better way. And so for if you're one of those fault finders, or if you're surrounded by fault finders, take heart. There's a remedy for this. The humble posture of seeking to understand, of seeking even when we disagree to not be disagreeable, and above all, the humble posture of thinking, maybe there's more than one way to do things, and my way is not the only way. With all apologies to Frank Sinatra, I did it my way. Please, dear leader, dear, dear professor, dear entrepreneur, let's move away from fault finding into kind of objective observation that seeks to help make people's lives better. I want to thank you for connecting to Optica and opening your eyes to see what God is doing.